welcome back guys uh, this is going to be Google Drive at a glance we're gonna go over a couple things uh, that pertain to Google Drive as far as adding files and organization uh, and a little bit of sharing I'm not gonna go too deep into anything in particular uh, there's a lot of resources in the hyperdocs that go into specific things that if you had more questions you can look into those or again always post uh, in the classroom or send us uh, an email or message directly so let's go ahead and get into it um, to get to drive uh, hopefully now we know there's a couple different ways we can do to uh, get to drive um, based off of what we learned about Chrome uh, you can see I have it bookmarked over here on the, our bookmark bar you could always do that or uh, drive.google.com is another way to get there and if you're logged in it's going to take you right into your drive and here's our tech facilitator drive and just real quick going over what we're seeing on the left hand side we have a little navigation um, panel that has some preset folders created by Google for us to use some of them can be broken down that's uh, signified by the little drop down arrow okay when you click on that you can see all the folders and subfolders beneath in the middle of our window uh, is our um, drive itself any folders as well as files in that main drive you might have something a little different you might have quick access along the top which can be turned on and off in settings okay in settings there's an option right here called suggestions turning on checking that or unchecking it will turn that on or off okay there's also another option in here that I wanted to point out real quick it's called convert uploads this when checked off will actually convert files that you import into drive into Google files and what I mean by that is that let's say you had a Google Doc lesson plan or a Google Doc activity um, I'm sorry a Microsoft Word document that you had uh, created in the past but you want it to be uh, in your drive and you want it to be saved as a Google Doc so you can use it with your students assign it in Google Classroom what you would do is you would come up here to new and you would do file upload and you would find that particular document that you were looking for in this instance I'm gonna go with this job fair word document you select open that file imports and if we come down here I think we're sorted by alphabetical order to change the way you're sorting up at the top here you see a little option that will allow you to change that okay I'm gonna come down here and oh, past it perfect here it is and what I can see is there's a little word icon let me know that's a word document and right now all I can do is open it up okay up here at the top is an open with button which will allow me to open it with any Google um, applications that are capable of working with this in this case it's Google Docs and I would click Google Docs and it would convert it the best it could now you can see in some instances certain types of files whether there's um, formatting margins things that Google Docs does not have access to will come over um, not say corrupt but um, misformatted and you might have to go through and rearrange and fix a lot of those issues so sometimes it might just be easier to start from scratch but instead of having to do this open with and now in my drive you'll see I actually have a Google Doc version and a Microsoft Word version if we were to check that box off that conversion would be done automatically and all we would be left with is just that Google Doc version rather than a um, Microsoft version as well okay and that might just save you a little bit of time um, when you're importing your files and that's how you can import any kind of file whether it's a PDF uh, an Excel file, a spreadsheet file, even videos and, and photos like you see here. Uh, Google Drive is not specific to Google Files. You can bring in any file you like. 
and store it in Drive and access it. It's just a matter of whether or not there is a Google application designed to work with that file, such as Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides. Okay. So next, um, now that we have our job fair file in our drive, let's go ahead and organize it by creating a new folder. Okay. I'm just going to call this example folder one, and I'm going to hit create. So create, and beautiful, here's my folder. Okay. Now take note, if I hit double click on example folder one, I am now in that folder. And if I do anything new here, whether it's create a, a folder, whether it's create a file, import a file, I'm just going to leave it as untitled, that file and folder lives in this example folder. So when you're creating new things, bringing in new things, make sure you know where you're at because that's where that file will exist so that you don't lose track of it or have to move it again later. Okay. You also, along the top here, as you go in these subfolders, get these little breadcrumbs of how you got there. We started at my drive, we went to example folder one, and now we are currently in untitled folder one. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to back out to my drive. We're going to go find, I'm going to close this little progress window. We're going to go find that um, job fair file and we're going to move it. Here we go to our folder. Once we select our file, just click it on it once, we get some tools up at the top here. These tools will change depending on what kind of file or folder we have selected. Okay, And the tool that we're going to go to is the three dots. Uh, from our Chrome video, we remember that three dots in any of the, uh, any of the Google applications, Freudian slip there, means uh, more, more options. Okay, More options or actions. In here, we have the option to move to. When we click on that, we now have access to all the folders in our drive. Okay, And here's our example folder. And I can select it, and I just say move here. If I wanted to move it to that subfolder, I could click on this arrow, and there's that other folder I have. Maybe I want to move it here. Okay. Another way to move things is drag and drop. I come over here, I can look for that folder I wanted to drag it to, and then maybe I want to take this picture. I drag it over here, and now I just move that picture into that folder. So there's a bunch of ways you can move things, okay? You can also move things that aren't in your drive. And what I mean by that is there's a shared with me folder down here. This shared with me folder is everything that was shared with you, okay? So if there's a file in here, let's say this video, and I want to add it to my drive. Actually, let's go with this faculty meeting um, document. Up at the top, a new icon appears, and that's a drive icon with a plus arrow. Okay, This is a file that someone shared with me, but the only way I can get to it right now is in this shared folder. And this shared folder cannot be organized or um, <clears throat> rearranged in any way that you want, aside from sorting okay so to better find it and access it you can add it to your drive and you can add it and choose where you want it to live so if i hit organize after clicking on that add to drive icon i can now go find that folder where is it there it is select it and hit move okay that file will see still exists here and shared with me because it still is shared with me but now, rather than having to come here and sort and try and find it every time, I know that that file lives right here in my example folder. I can easily access it here whenever I need to get to it, rather than searching through all those shared with me files. Okay, And that again, that function or, or um, idea is called add to drive. We're just adding things from this shared with me folder to my drive so that they're easy for us to access so that we can organize them in a way that makes sense to us. Okay. The last thing I want to touch on before I let you go is sharing. Okay. As we select these files, let's say this picture of Chris here, two icons appear that pertain to sharing. One is the little silhouette icon to share with individuals and the other is a um, shareable link, which um, creates a link for that particular file that when um, pasted on a website, in an email, uh, 
that link will take individuals to that particular file. Okay, we're going to click on this icon right here. And when it loads, we can type in specific people that we want to share with. Okay, we can add them. Okay. Once we've added individuals to our document, we need to um, set permissions as far as what we want them to be able to do. There are three main permissions when it comes to sharing documents, and that is edit access, comment access, and view access. Okay? Viewing is the lightest of all the permissions. That person can only view that particular file. They can't make any changes. All they can do is view it. Comment. Still, they can view it, but now they can leave comments. They can click on the comment button and post comments alongside um, that particular do document. This is great for peer um, evaluations for students to use um, without having to worry about other students um, editing or making changes to other students' documents. Okay, And then the last one is edit, which with this uh, particular permission, you're now granting full access um, to any of these individuals to make changes um, to any of your um, documents as well as giving them access to invite other people to come view or make changes to this document as well. So they can make changes to the document and make changes to who can access that document. Okay, So it's very important to make sure you set the right um, permission. By default, when you're in inviting individuals, it's going to make that permission edit. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to leave that as um, edit. Okay, down here's the little advanced button. Um, one of the HyperDoc links goes over this a little bit more. Um, I'm going to skip over that right now. That's where you can adjust permissions later as well as remove them. Okay, so if I wanted to, I could notify these people. I'm not in this instance, and I'm just going to hit OK. Skip sending invitations, OK. Now, in addition to uh, sending invitations to particular files, you can do the same thing with folders. I select the folder, same icon appears, OK? I type those people in and give them access to this folder, OK? Just like I did before, choose my access. Now it's a little different because they added organize or add. You're going to give people access to this folder. So not only can they edit the things in it, but they can add their own files to it or organize and rearrange, add new folders in this folder. This is great when you're working collaboratively with a group on a number of different documents. OK, I'm going to cancel here. So rather than sharing each individual document, you share the folder. And now everyone has access to anything in that folder. OK, this is great for um, working on things, files in the folder with um, teachers that are in the same department, grade level teachers, whatever the case may be. Um, a lot of teachers will do this um, with their administrators as far as lesson plans. They'll share a lessons plan folder. Okay, There's a number of different ways you can utilize this shared folder um, feature, even with students. Okay, So these are a couple of the things I wanted to kind of go over with you just real briefly as far as organizing your folders um, and files and sharing files and folders. Again, this is just scraping the surface. There is a ton of information pertaining to Google Drive in the HyperDoc. Take a look at some of the things. And again, as always, if you have any questions at all, feel free to post your comments on the classroom or get a hold of Chris Kerr or myself through any means necessary. Okay. That is all for Drive. Thank you for listening.